Hello and welcome to Bud's RPG Review, where I give my thoughts on role-playing games, card games and board games. Welcome to the sixth in a series of Redux Reviews, where I revisit my earlier videos that were recorded a few years ago on substandard equipment and with less in the way of production values. The aim of these reviews is to enable me to tighten and expand the writing, fleshing it out with further insight where appropriate, and to produce something of superior video and audio quality to the original. Today's retro review is Judge Dread the Role-Playing Game by Games Workshop. Ok, first a bit of history. Released in 1985, Judge Dread the Role-Playing Game was the very first iteration of a tabletop role-playing game based on the popular British comic book series. It was released a second time as a 142 page hardback book in 1989. Right to the cover. Here we have a great piece by renowned fighting fantasy artist Terry Oakes that does a great job of showing exactly what judges are about. Ok to the box. Inside we have the 72 page judges manual emblazed with read this book first the 128 page Game Master's book, a roadway map for the adventure contained in the Game Master's book, and a selection of cardboard cutout characters to use with the roadway adventure. As the judge's manual says to read it first, let's start there. The first chapter begins with the role playing staple around the idea of what role playing is, with the usual explanation of what dice are and the like. The second chapter is the fun bit creating your very own judge. Judges' statistics are all rolled as 2d10 plus 20, apart from strength, which is rolled on a d4 and a 4 is considered a 2, giving you a 50% chance of having a strength of 2. The stats are percentile based and are initiative, combat skill, drive skill, tech skill, street skill, med skill, and psi skill. Your initiative governs how many actions you take in a round. I will explain this later. Combat skill is pretty self explanatory. Drive skill governs your ability to pilot vehicles of all shapes and sizes. Tech skill is your ability to use the various technologies in Mega City 1. Street skill is essentially your inner intuition. Med skill is fairly obvious. And lastly, we have Psy skill. If you start out with a Psy skill of 40 or more, you can be a Psy judge. Additionally, if you roll a 1 for strength, you add D6 to your Psy skill to compensate for your low physical stature. Also, your Psy skill is used to resist incoming psychic attacks. Additionally, if you roll a Tech skill of 40, you can be a Tech judge, and a Med skill of 40 can make you a Med judge. These subclasses of the usual judge open up other skills and avenues of progress. Also, a judge needs to roll to see if they are psychically immune or triple zero. Furthermore, judges who start off with a 40 in any stat begin the game with a special ability to use with that stat. More on that in a bit. All skill rolls are your stat aside from your strength on D100. The judge creation chapter continues with the equipment that all judges have, including familiar things like the birdie lie detector, the lawmaster bike and the famous lawgiver pistol. They also detail the different bullet types that the judges use on a day to day basis, things like armour piercing, high explosive and rubber ricochet. Chapter 3 is entitled Making an Arrest, and it essentially covers the combat round. One game turn is 6 combat rounds, and a combat round is 10 seconds long. This 10 seconds is broken down into 10 1 second segments, in which you can perform an action. The amount of actions you can take in a round are dictated by your initiative score. The higher your initiative, the more actions you can take. Most single, simple actions take up one of your phases in a turn. So, for example, a judge with a 29 initiative would have three actions in a round. In this instance, these would occur on phase 3, 6 and 9 of the 10 phases in a round. So when the round begins, the judge would do nothing for phase 1 and 2, could then draw their weapon on phase 3, do nothing on phase 4 and 5, aim their weapon on phase 6, do nothing for 7 and 8 and fire their weapon on phase 9, then do nothing on phase 10, and that would be a full combat round. Unlike a lot of other game systems, the person with the lowest initiative score goes first in deciding what they want to do, and the person with the highest initiative goes last. The thinking behind this is that faster characters have a swifter appraisal of the situation, and either way, all actions actually go off simultaneously. The designers have provided a fairly good list of what one action can be used to do. There are lots of examples in this chapter of the various combat modifiers for terrain, lighting, etc, and it also covers things like area effect fire, weapon malfunctions, hit locations and armour. Damage is dealt in stuns and wounds. Essentially, a stun kills your next action in a phase, and wounds generally lower your stats or movement. When they eventually reach zero, you require medical attention before being able to function as normal. Hand to hand combat is also covered, as is firing on vehicles and even Dread's own famous Lawmaster kick. All of the examples are things you've seen in the comics, and things you would expect to be able to do in Mega City 1. They also go on to give a really good, detailed example of an arrest. Chapter 4 covers other actions. These range from how to pursue a perp to climbing and swinging, sneaking, driving, all manner of miscellaneous things. Chapter 5 is called Patrol. This covers the basics of the day to day life of a judge in Mega City 1. 
They include details on things that fans of 2000 AD will already be familiar with, such as Mac and Barney. In this chapter, it also gives the all-important information on arresting and sentencing, including a list of typical sentences that perps can expect for their crimes. For players, this is a must-read. It also goes on to detail the Justice Department and how it runs, and also the Sector House. Chapter 6 is called Experienced Judges. In this game, you're awarded experience points for completing scenarios. You can spend 100 of these at a time to either gain a small stat increase or a special ability. Special abilities can only be gained at the rate of 1 every new percentile in a stat you gain. For example, you can take one between 40 to 49%, a second one at 50 to 59%, up to a maximum of seven abilities when your stat reaches 100%. These abilities are feats that allow your judge to perform interesting in-game stunts. For example, Initiative has a skill called Instant Reactions, which allows you to attempt to perform an extra action in a round. Combat Skill has a skill called Fast Draw, which allows you to draw your weapon without having to spend an action on it. It's worth noting that Med Judges, Tech Judges and Side Judges gain XP at a different rate than normal judges. Side judges have a raft of psychic powers to choose from, including things you will have seen Judge Anderson do in the comics, such as telekinesis, detect intent, and psychic attack. Chapter 7 is called A Judge's Guide to Mega City 1, and it gives a potted history and timeline of events leading up to the current state of the city, at least up until how it was back in 1985, as well as outlining some of the crazy trends and odd places in the city. And Chapter 8 is a very useful glossary of Mega City 1 slang, a definite enhancement to the atmosphere of the game. All in all, the Judges book gives you everything you need to know to create, customise and play a Judge in Mega City 1. A good start. Ok, so on to the Game Master's book. Chapter 1, the introduction, gives you the usual notes on how to run a game and discusses the likes of the tools of the trade, designing scenarios and pacing. Chapter 2 is called Getting Started and gives yet more notes on creating a Judge and goes more in depth on how to run combat rounds and gives more specifics on stuns, wounds and medical attention. It also covers hand-to-hand -hand combat and damage to vehicles with more detail. It has rules on lifting and throwing, locks and oddly, rolling vehicles. They then go on to provide a small test encounter for you to pit your party against. Chapter 3 is called Expanding the Adventure. This chapter covers campaign design and generally how to make Mega City 1 a living, breathing thing that the judges can immerse themselves into. This chapter also gives details on all of the various methods that judges use to incriminate potential perps. It also gives guidelines on experience points and how to deal with them. It then goes on to give details on the judge hierarchy and details the different types of specialist judges. Chapter 4, Perps and Crimes, gives details on how to generate NPCs and gives some typical canon examples like punks, futsies and troggies. All good stuff. We then get more in-depth information on sentencing for crimes as well as details on sponts and narcs. The next chapter deals with sectors and city blocks. This gives details on the anatomy of the average city block, detailing what you would typically find there and how to deal with it in game. Chapter 6, People and Places, is probably the first chapter I would look at if I bought the game as it details the famous good and bad guys, depending on your point of view. We get the likes of Judge Anderson, Chief Judge Magruder, Judge Hershey, and of course, Dredd himself. Among the bad guys you get the Dark Judges, the Angel Gang, Uggy Apollino, and even Chopper, who puzzlingly has a much lower drive skill than you would expect. Also included are some other characters like Max Normal, Otto Sump and Walter the Wobot. The chapter also details some of the strange and bizarre groups and places you would find in Mega City 1, as well as some of the crazy products like Munts, Adifax and Umpty Candy. It also includes some of the events that happen in Mega City 1 like the Intercity Eating Contest and Super Surf. Chapter 7 is entitled Other Data, and this has stats for aliens including things like the Cleggs and Clegg Hounds, as well as normal creatures that have been changed by the nuclear wasteland, like dog vultures and dinosaurs. It also has the various diseases that have shown up in 2000 AD, like Grubbs Disease and Tutti Frutti, and also has a fairly good section on equipment that includes Boeing and Susan. They even have a section on how to create mutants, which may not be as vast as Warhammer's mutation tables, but certainly adds a futuristic feel to proceedings. It then continues on with sections on robots, cyborgs and vehicles, as well as information on non-standard weapons like disintegrators and stub guns. The final part is a small adventure called The Ultimate Crime of Tony Thermo, to round it all off. This is a full adventure rather than an encounter that we saw earlier. Judge Dredd the role-playing game is one that appears to be very divisive amongst gaming circles. Some people felt that the rules were incomplete and were only enhanced by the adventures and companion, and that the system was just that bit too simple, whereas other people took umbrage with starting judges being too weak and that, for example, the log of a bike was statistically better. For me, Judge Dredd in the game is every bit as good as Judge Dredd should be, and to be as good as him, you have to have been around for as long as he has, a point I feel is missed by some. 
I feel that out of all of the various role-playing iterations of Judge Dredd over the years, the designers of Games Workshop were the only ones who truly understood the subject matter. The simplicity of the system is what I find endearing. The rules make for fast-paced, gun-toting action, basically what almost every 2000 AD comic contained, and I can't really see where anything else is needed here. If you're a fan of Everything Dread, then I would highly recommend this game, if indeed you can manage to find a copy. It's worth pointing out that amongst my reviews, this is the only one that I, for some unknown reason, never gave a score to. For me, Judge Dread the role-playing game, to coin a phrase, does exactly what it says in the tin. This is 2000 AD come to life, and a game I had a lot of fun playing in my youth. I give it a 9 out of 10. If you enjoyed this review, please make sure to hit the thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and check out my other videos. Also, if you're interested in buying this product, I'll put some links below. Lastly, if you like what I produce here, then maybe think about supporting me on Patreon. Put out.